your ears are not 100% reliable, at least when not when it comes to loud sounds over a long period of time and from week to week if you're mixing at church services. So if you're running sound at church, that's why you need an SPL meter at the sound booth. But which one do you choose? What settings do you put it on? And what are you looking for if you're looking to buy a new one? Today, we'll answer all those questions for you. Hey, if you're new here, my name is James and I help church sound techs, worship leaders, and tech directors eliminate the mystery and frustration around sound at church so that you can get consistent results without the frustration. If that's you, you found the right place, go ahead and mash that subscribe button and welcome to the club of sound ninjas. So why can't you just trust your ears to tell you how loud it is? So there's this story of a guy that's driving home and it starts to rain. So he turns on his windshield wipers and turns up the radio and it's coming down really hard. So he has to turn up the radio a little bit more. So finally he gets home, goes inside, goes to bed. And the next day he comes out to his car and he thinks that somebody has broken in and cranked up his stereo because there is no way he had it that loud. This my friends is the result of temporary threshold shift or when we're in a noisy environment for a long period of time, things that don't seem that loud can actually be quite loud. This can happen to you if you've been around loud machinery at work and then show up at church for a rehearsal in the evening. So temporary threshold shift is a phenomenon that happens when we're exposed to loud sounds. To protect our hearing from being damaged, our middle ear will actually adjust so that we have a higher threshold or it takes more intensity for us to perceive sounds at the same level. Usually temporary threshold shift goes back after a few hours or God forbid a few days, but your ear does recover over time. The problem is you might be mixing right in the middle of one of those times or mixing might create that temporary threshold shift. If you ignore the effects of temporary threshold shift and continue to expose yourself to too much sound pressure level, you can actually get permanent hearing damage and that doesn't come back without a creative miracle. So it's very important that we have a good grid on just how loud things are and knowing for how long we've been exposed to those sounds. Another reason why you can't just use your ears and you probably want an SPL meter is that people differ. And so from week to week, if you're having different people mixing, you wanna have the same general targets for how loud it is and the SPL meter can really help you get there. So what does an SPL meter measure? Well, it's got a calibrated microphone inside of it that tells you how much intensity is happening at one particular spot, namely where that microphone is. It's actually calibrated to a certain number of joules per square meters. So it's the amount of energy on a flat plane in one place. There are different settings on your SPL meter that tell you different things for different environments. The first one that we'll talk about is the fast and slow speed. The fast setting will tell you the instantaneous peak of a certain measurement, averaged over about a quarter of a second. This is more sensitive to things that have transients, like drums or acoustic guitars. Slow waiting, however, averages it over about a second and sometimes a second and a half. It shows less emphasis on the transients and more on the average levels that are happening over time. Now, I have to put air quotes on average because when we're talking about sound waves, Sound waves are oscillating particles that are going back and forth. So because they're wiggling back and forth, if we take the average pressure of that, the average ends up being about zero, minus any DC offset if you super nerds are out there watching this. But we have to take a measurement called root mean squared in order to get the average level on a sound wave. So the slow setting is more about the average levels and it takes into account the transients, but less so. This is more like what our ear perceives sound as. We will perceive levels on an average level much more than we will the absolute peaks. The other thing that we wanna look at with our SPL meter is the weighting network. This determines what part of the frequency spectrum that our SPL meter is going to focus on or what parts it's going to ignore. Now, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you've probably seen me throw up on the screen the Fletcher Munson curve. This shows that at different intensities, our ears will perceive different frequency ranges at different balances. The short story is that it takes a lot more low frequencies to be perceived at the same level as upper and middle frequencies. If we put our SPL meter on the A weighting network, it will filter out the lower frequencies that we're less sensitive to and focus more on the middle and upper frequencies that we are more sensitive to. 
If we choose the C weighting network, that will include all the low frequencies at their absolute intensities, not at our perceived intensities. So if you're worried about how loud it is for people's hearing safety, I recommend using A weighting. And if you're just wanting to get the overall energy and know what your subs are pushing relative to everything else, you could use C weighting, but I don't typically. My brain just kind of works in A weighting for perception and reading the meter at the same time. There are other weighting networks, but they go beyond the scope of this video and I don't really understand them fully. So if you want me to do a deep dive into it, type that down in the comments below and I'll see if I can do some researching back to you. Now, another way to measure how much intensity we've had over a period of time is to use time weighted averages. And this goes beyond what your simple handheld SPL meter will show you and requires a program like Smart SPL that can gather data from a calibrated microphone and then interpret that data in a variety variety of ways. With Smart SPL, you could have a bunch of different SPL meters and a bunch of different numbers up on the screen to give you a bigger picture idea of what's going on with your levels and for how long those levels have been at that range. You could show a 10 second average, you could show a 10 minute average, because those things are all factors that go into how long people have been exposed to loud sounds. In the church environment, many of our services are very short right? So 30 minutes of worship typically, but some people have longer worship services and that's awesome. I don't think everybody has to fit into a cookie cutter image of what worshiping and gathering on a Sunday should look like. However, if you're in one of those churches where worship lasts about 30 minutes, you really don't have to be terribly concerned about damaging people's hearing with noise exposure until you're getting into the 92 to 95 dB SPL range. There's a lot more detail that goes into this, but I'll put that down in the description below so that you can see the NIOSH exposure recommendations for different SPLs and the times. But if you're in one of those churches where you really like to push it, and that's okay, you just have to be aware of you as well, so that during sound check, during rehearsal, during the three or four services, however many you have in a day, if you're exposing yourself to too much noise, you can end up damaging the only window that you have to enjoy and mix music. And I don't want that for you, so please be careful with how much noise you're exposed to and really track this stuff down. Now, I do know a guy that's like a super nerd on this, so if you really wanna do a deep dive, I'll see if I can get him to come on the channel and we can really nerd out together. Comment below if you wanna see that. So where does the SPL meter fall short? Well, in essence, the SPL meter cannot judge tone, right? We could make something that is very harsh, very unpleasing, thin, nasally, kind of piercing, and that would measure not as high on the SPL meter as perhaps a mix that's big and full and has lots of low end supporting it and is actually measuring louder, but feels much more comfortable and less damaging for your hearing. While you're watching the meter, you have to kind of watch it for a minute to know about where you're averaging. Because even though we put it on a slow speed, it's not quite super accurate in every single number that it hits, right? I kind of try to take note of what the average numbers that I'm hitting during a big chorus and maybe where it peaks the most but I'm not really worried so much about those peak levels as I am the average levels that I'm hitting. A simple SPL meter also doesn't tell you how long you've been loud. And so one of the things that I recommend if you're mixing and you want to mix loud is definitely mix loud, but make sure that you're mixing in quiet moments as well. And that's going to take coordination between the sound team and the worship team for creating arrangements that are dynamic and don't just stay at a 10 the whole time. They actually come down for a little while so that you can have some of that contrast and people's ears can get a break. Also, unless you get one that's specifically calibrated, I would use these as a guideline and kind of a consistency tool rather than an absolute, like, this is precise safety tool. They do sell calibration devices, but those can get kind of pricey. And some of the less expensive SPL meters don't even allow you to have a trim function to set that SPL for whatever it is when you're calibrating it. So which one should you buy? Well, if it was me, I would make sure that I'm reading a lot of reviews and review from people that are using it the same way that I am. Like, I care about airplanes and trucks and stuff like that, but not as much as music, so I want to read reviews from people who are doing music stuff. If you're in a climate-controlled church environment, I would go for one that's a little bit more repeatable in its results, rather than being absolutely accurate and calibrated to something. Of course, you don't want it to be way off, so you should have some idea of whether or not it's close to something that's actually calibrated. Now, speaking of calibration, you might be wondering, can I just download an app for my phone? And 
I don't mind if you do that, but just know the limitations of what your phone's microphone is for. It's not really meant to pick up low end, even though you're kind of ignoring low end with your A weighting. And it's not really meant to capture transients, even though we're kind of not trying to capture transients. But the thing is your phone's microphone probably has a bunch of dead skin cells and lint in it from being in your pocket. Why would you trust your mixed decisions to something that's set up like that? I personally wouldn't. You can if you want, but if you come up and show me your phone SBL meter, I'm not gonna pay it much attention. This one from X-Tech is really solid and I like that it has auto ranging. There are a couple Galaxy Audio ones. These two by Galaxy Audio are available at Sweetwater and the more expensive one I like more because its range is a little bit more useful. I don't like having to set the range that I'm in in the different parts of the worship set. I just want to turn it on and know that I'm good to go without having to hit one more extra button. Another budget option is the Air Kill ES100. It's got other features like temperature and humidity, so I suppose you could watch the temperature and humidity go up as people come in after the service starts rather than what it's like during sound check. But if you're not setting up things where you're time aligning your speakers, it might not be a feature that you absolutely need. So if you're going to buy a new SPL meter, which one are you going to grab? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to make sure that it's got A weighting and slow. That's really what you need to know. Anything else beyond that, you can figure it out. Hey, if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.